so a driver trainer uh, for the fire service, uh, effectively what we do is instruct or familiarise all of our drivers on pretty much most of the fleet of vehicles that we have. That can be anything from the ALPs uh, to heavy off-road vehicles, um, water carriers, and of course fire engine or cars. And all we need to do is just make sure our, uh, all our drivers remain competent to carry on and fulfil their duties. Uh, no, driver trainers don't respond to emergencies. I think we'd be quite busy if we did. Um, but all of our driver trainers are all trained in first aid, casualty care. Uh, all the fire engines, our training vehicles, all carry first aid or casualty care bags. We'd always stop if we see something on the side of the road. Quite often we see people that have maybe fallen or tripped. A lot of elderly people, whether we're on response runs or not, we'd always pull over and stop and try and offer help. Uh, so, so my day starts about eight, uh, eight o'clock, half past eight at West Moors. Um, I get there, ensure the classroom's uh, ready for, for the student. Um, we then obviously meet the student, go into the classroom, and depending which course we're delivering, whether that's uh, refresher courses or familiarisations, uh, could be acquisition courses, it would depend, that would sort of lead us to which PowerPoint we would deliver for them. Yeah, so from the, from the classroom, we then head out, head out driving. Um, there's no set routes for us to take. Each of the driver trainers sort of maybe have their preferred routes, where they go for more rural roads, where they're quite, quite bendy, or where they go for faster roads, or then we head into the conurbation looking for heavier traffic and traffic lights. Um, and that's really it, really, that the whole day is assessed, and at the end, hopefully, we can sign people off as competent to carry on their duties. So if I can instruct them for a week and get them through, get them passed at the end of the week so they're, they're on the run and they can drive the fire range into instance, I think that's the, the most rewarding part for me. I come across more incidents when we're out and about, I think, because we just drive around so much of elderly people that have fallen over, elderly people that have crashed their cars. I, keep, I say elderly, but that's the majority of the people we come across. More than when I'm on call in, in Verwood, <laughs> the amount of people that, that we stop for and help. Um, at the same time, um, the public will come up to us as well um, at the air show. They pulled us off for a lady that had fallen over. We went again, offered casualty care until the ambulance turned up. To be a driver trainer, I don't think there's any specific characteristics. You, you, it'd be any different to friends, family or anyone else you work with in the fire service. Um, you need to be patient and calm, just like instructing anybody really. Everybody learns differently and you just have to sort of tailor your, your teaching uh, to, to that person. Um, yeah, driver training, the nerves of steel always help. There's been some scary moments in the truck. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, I don't think the characteristics are any different to any other friend or family or firefighter, really, to be an instructor. Before I started driver training, I knew a little bit, yes. Um, I was on call, or I still am on call in Verwood. I was previously on call in Hamworthy and Verwood at the same time. Um, I had a couple of friends whose other halves, wives, were driving instructors. So I was sort of investigating a little bit of what they did. Um, so yeah, I was, I was kind of looking into it anyway, becoming a driving instructor. And then when looking on the, the website, obviously this job popped up. It was like, ooh, <laughs> it was almost fate. So um, yeah, I applied for it, went through the interview and here we are. <laughs>